Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite books of the year 2015. Oh yeah! I read so many good books this year, I also read so many terrible books this year. But today we're going to focus on the good books, the best books of 2015. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm also going to take off these glasses because I'm sure they're a little bit distracting. Burr, burr, burr. I'm not going to go into super full detail about each book, but I will leave links down below to the different reviews that I've done for the books that I've mentioned within this video. There is no order to this list, I'm just randomly picking out the books that I liked the most this year, and I'm going to showcase them to you right now. The first on my list is a series, and that is the Lunar Chronicle series. I started and finished this series this year. I ran I randomly picked up Sander and I was like, hmm, maybe I'll try out this series. I never thought that I was going to read it. I never thought that it would be something that I would enjoy, but I started reading Cinder and I just fell in love with this world and the characters. And I'm so glad that I decided to randomly pick up Cinder and try it out because I just fell in love with the series and I'm so happy that I read it. If you don't know what the Lunar Chronicles series is about, it's a bunch of different fairy tale retellings with different sci-fi elements throughout them. Cinder is a retelling of Cinderella, Scarlet, The Little Red Riding Hood, Cress, Rapunzel, and Winter is a retelling of Snow white. So if those sound like something that you might enjoy, definitely check them out. I would highly recommend them. The next book on my list is wow, Mistborn, The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. Holy mackerel, I need to continue on with this trilogy. I've only read this first book right here, but it completely blew me away. I'm so glad that I decided to finally pick it up. There was a lot of hype and buzz surrounding this book, and so I was a little bit hesitant, but I picked it up, completely fell in love with it. Brandon Sanderson is just a mastermind when it comes to building worlds. He is such a fantastic world builder and I love that aspect of the story and also the characters are just to die for. Absolutely love this book. I do need to continue on with the series and I will be doing that some point in the near future, hopefully. I need to continue on with it. I need to find out what happens next. Ugh. Next up, we've got A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. This book is about a guy by the name of Kel, who is a traveler, and he travels between different alternate versions of London. We've got Red London, we've got Grey London, and we've got White London. So he travels between these different alternate versions of London, carrying messages between the royals, but he also does a little bit of smuggling on the side, and one day, he smuggles something that he shouldn't, and it causes all sorts of chaos, and this this book was just so interesting. I love the idea of different alternate versions of London. That was really interesting to me. And I also just loved the characters. They were each very unique. And I just see so much potential with this series to become even better and even greater within the next few books. So I can't wait for the next book to see what's next in store for these cast of characters. Next on my list is My Heart and Other Black Holes by Jasmine Warga. This is actually a debut novel by Jasmine Warga, which completely surprised me because while reading this book, I was just so impressed by the writing style and the way that she told her story. This book was one that I randomly picked up at Barnes & Noble, and I'm so glad that I randomly picked it up. It is a story that deals with a really tough issue. This book does have a trigger for suicide, so if that's something that affects you, I would definitely not pick up this book because it is heavily focused on suicide. We follow these two characters who meet on a website in order to form a suicide pact. It's heartbreaking and painful and really hard to read at times because of the material that it covers within this book, but it's definitely worth it. It's definitely a powerful story, and I would highly recommend it. The next I have on my list is actually a series, and it's freaking heavy, and that is the Throne of Glass series. Oh yeah, I finally got caught up with this series. I had read Throne of Glass in 2014, and I really freaking loved it, so I finally marathoned and got caught up on this series this year, and I just completely fell in love with it. Even though I had issues with the most recent release, I still love this series, and I'm still excited to see where it goes, because it just keeps getting better and better and even more epic. It's just an all-around exciting and fun series, and I know that it's super hyped up, but I'm going to go ahead and add to that hype pool and just say that I love this series, it's amazing, and you should definitely check it out. Next we have The Marvels by Brian Selznick. I loved The Invention of Hugo Cabret by Brian Selznick, so I was super excited to pick this one up, and I love this one just as much as I loved The Invention of Hugo Cabret. In this book we have two stories that interlock in some way. We follow Billy Marvel and his family of actors, and then we follow Joseph who runs away from his school and goes to find his uncle who is rather nutty and interesting, and in some way these two stories interlock. It's really interesting. I just love the way that Brian Selznick tells stories. He's such a fascinating storyteller, and I look forward to more books by Brian Selznick in the future. Then we've got The Honest Truth by Dan Jemeinhart. This is a middle grade contemporary story about this boy who is sick and stuck in the hospital, but one day he's just had enough, and so he runs away from home, and he goes on this big adventure with his dog named Bo. This story is heartbreaking and honest. What do you 
you know, it's honest. But I just really enjoyed reading this middle grade story about a young boy who is dealing with these really serious issues and just seeing how he handles himself. The next on my list is The Doldrums by Nicholas Gannon. This is a middle grade story and I randomly picked this one up this year and I'm so glad that I did. I'm happy that this is the first in a series because I want more from this author and I want more from these characters. This is about a boy by the name of Archer B. Hemsley who has a desire for big adventures but his parents will hardly let him leave the house. In fact, they only let him leave the house if he's going to school. But he makes two friends and together they attempt to go on this big adventure to kind of uncover a mystery about Archer's grandparents. It's got these amazing illustrations inside which I think really enhance the story and it was just overall a really great and refreshing middle grade story. Next we've got Library of Souls by Ransom Riggs, the finale to my all-time favorite trilogy, The Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I can't believe it's over. I still haven't come to terms with the fact that this trilogy is over. I don't even want to talk about it that much, but I was very satisfied with how this story came to an end. There were a few things that I had a little bit of issues with, but I was still really happy. I feel like everybody got their happy ending and it was just great. And I'm sad that it's over. I can't believe it's over, but I still have the movie to look forward to. And it was announced recently that Ransom is actually writing the Tales of the Peculiar, which I'm so excited for. So there's still a few things to look forward to with this series, but I'm still sad to see it come to a close. I'm so sad. Next on my list is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. After years of you guys pushing this book on me, telling me to read it, I finally read it and I get it. I get what the hype is about. This book was incredible. One of the best young adult contemporaries that I've ever read, even though I wasn't super satisfied with how this book came to a close, I still really love this story. And finally, the last book on my list for best books of 2015 is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I was a little bit hesitant going into this book because I didn't really enjoy the Grisha trilogy, so I was like, am I going to enjoy this book? Am I going to hate it? But I freaking loved it so much. Basically, this is a heist that takes place in the Grisha universe, and the characters are just the best. The characterization was probably my favorite part about this book. Yes, the heist was a lot of fun and it was exciting, but the characters, man, the characters were just the freaking best. So that's it for my list of best books from the year 2015. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. You guys should let me know down below your top five books from the year of 2015. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you soon with a new video. Later. I'm gonna go put down these heavy books now. I don't want to say goodbye to the Peculiars.